Joe, can't you load no faster than that? Can I load it any faster? Why don't you try pitching? Let me stack for a while. You must be forgetting. I did the loading this morning, you did the stacking. Now it's your turn to load a while. No, I ain't forgetting. No. I'm just complaining. Now I ask you, do you ever see two guys work so hard and accomplish so little? I'll have to admit they're a bit on the slow side, Adam. But then they're pretty puny, especially the one on top of the wagon. <laughs> yeah. Well, what are you doing? Oh, I thought I'd give him a hand. Well, we're going to make that dance in Virginia City. We don't have much time. It won't take but a few minutes. Well, as long as you're such a fool for work, Dave, you'll be my guest. <laughs> Oh, hey, ain't that shirt you sent all the way to St. Louis for? Yeah. It's pretty bad shape now. Huh. All right, I can send for another. Come on, we better get the rest of this hay loaded before your paw skins us alive. And he can sure do it, too. Hey, Walker. You stand right where you are, Walker. Oh! Drop your gun, Bob. I don't know who you are, mister, but you're gonna go home in a box. I'm a United States Marshal, and this is my prisoner. Well, what'd Dave do? You got the wrong man, mister. Now, hold it. I'll kill the first man that tries to interfere. Dave didn't have a chance, Bob. Marshall clubbed him before he knew what was happening. I'll have a look at your credentials, Marshal, if you don't mind. A tin star and a shotgun won't get you up the Ponderosa alive. I said your credentials. United States Marshal Emma Dodd, Los Angeles, Office of Southwest Territory. And was it necessary to half kill the boy, Marshal? He had a pitchfork. I don't take any chances. Dave's the one who didn't have a chance, Marshal. Marshal, Dave Walker has been working for me for almost a year now. In all that time, I've never known him to commit an act of violence of any sort. If you have any complaints, you can lodge him with my superiors. Oh, I'll do that. You can count on it. In the meantime, you tell your boys to step aside. I'm going to take my prisoner into Virginia City. On what charge? Murder. Let's go. You have to treat him so roughly. All right. I'll handle my prisoner in my own way. Now look, he's not an animal. Treat him with some consideration. Mr. Cartwright, it's a federal offense, punishable by fine or imprisonment or both, to interfere with the United States Marshal in the execution of his duties. Now, you step aside. Don't you fellas think you'd better get dressed if you're going to make that dance? After what happened to Davey, I don't feel much like dancing, Paul. Me neither, Paul. Paul, do you really believe what that feller had to say about Dave being guilty of murder? Well, the question of Dave's innocence or guilt still has to be proved at a trial. Yeah, that is if he gets one. Doubt acted as though he's already been convicted. Yeah. Ain't there some way we can stop him, Paul? Boss, he's the United States Marshal. His orders are to take Dave back to Los Angeles to stand trial. Well, maybe if some of Dave's friends got together, we could change all that. Now, Joe, whatever we think of Doubt as a man, he still represents the law. Must be a better way to help Dave. We're listening. Well, we can ride into town tomorrow morning for one thing. Talk to Dowd. 
Stage for Southern California doesn't leave till noon. Yeah, but how can we help him? I don't know. I do have a lawyer friend in Los Angeles I'd like to telegraph a message to. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to buy old Dave a shirt, too. Replace that when he tore up helping us load the hay. Yeah, that'd be a good idea, Hoss. Well, three of us will leave in the morning, then. Three of who? Well, Hoss, Adam, and myself. No, what about me? I think you'd better stay here, Joe. Well, somebody has to get the rest of the hay in. <laughs> That'll keep him busy till spring, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> This country's growing up, Bob. Wasn't always you could send $1,000 flying through the air from here to Los Angeles. Well, at least it'll provide Dave with the kind of help he'll need. Paul, I'm getting just about ready to kill a man, Paul. Oh, what now? Well, I just took that new shirt over to Dave, and you ought to see what that marshal's done to him. What about the sheriff? Didn't he try to stop him? No, he's up at Pyramid Lake or someplace. Ain't nobody over there but that deputy. Dow just shoved him aside. We better get over to that jail, see what we can do. Let me see your face, boy. Dan, how did this happen? Dowd. Brought the boy in last night and then demanded a cell. I couldn't refuse to cooperate with the U.S. Marshal, Ben. He did this to Dave. Well, I didn't see it happen. Curly had the night duty. He said Dowd came back to check the boy's chains. Paul, I'm gonna kill him. Well, that wouldn't help matters. I did. Did you give him any provocation? Do you think he needed any, Mr. Cartwright? But why? He didn't offer any resistance. Why would he want to do this to you? Maybe because he's just that kind of man, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah. I guess that's so. Dave, pause white $1,000 to a lawyer friend in Los Angeles. Make sure you get a fair trial. Adam. You think Dowd's going to let me reach Los Angeles alive? David, did you commit this murder? Mr. Cartwright, I don't even know what Dowd is talking about. All right, Dave. We believe you. Where's the marshal now, Dan? He's over at the hotel packing his bags. The stage leaves in 20 minutes. Well, that'll give us enough time. Come on, boys. Awesome. Thanks for the shirt. Nicest one I ever had. That's all right, Dave. Mr. Cartwright, thanks for everything you've done for me, but don't bother trying to talk to Marshal Dowd. He won't do any good. Well. Good morning. Will you please see that our bags are taken out to the stage? You talking about the stage of Los Angeles? Yes, sir. I think that is the name of the little village. You see, my daughter and I are not so familiar with this part of your country. But we like it very much. It's so very beautiful. Isn't it, Father? Indeed, my child, it is. And we are looking forward to the rest of our journey. There's nothing between here and Los Angeles but 500 miles of dry, hot desert. But your desert is most remarkable. We have never seen anything to match its rugged splendor. You'd better wait for the next stage. We aren't taking any passengers on this one. No, no, we cannot wait. You see, we have made arrangements already at Los Angeles. There will be a sailing vessel waiting for us, on which we have reservations. I said no passengers. Hello, Marshal. Hello, Cartwright. You're blocking the door. Yes, I know. We've just seen what you did to Dave Walker. He resisted my efforts to shackle him. Was there any need to chain him to that bed? Just the need to make sure he didn't escape from that flea bag jail. What about his face? What'd you hit him with? Cartwright. Get out of my way. Mister, if you weren't a United States Marshal... The, the point is, I am. Let him out, Adam. Excuse me, gentlemen. May I present myself? My name is Dr. Anton Strasser. This is my daughter, Andrea. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, Ben Cartwright. 
These are my sons. Very pleased to meet you, gentlemen. Uh, could you kindly tell me, is there some danger in our taking this particular stage? Danger? No, there's no danger. It might prove to be a bit unpleasant for you and your daughter. Unpleasant? How do you mean? Well, doctor, you see, they're, they're taking a young man in chains on that stage to Los Angeles. In chains? But why? Is he a criminal? Uh, no, ma'am, he's not a criminal. But it might be safer if you did take the stage next week. But, Father, surely he cannot prevent us from taking the stage. Easy, easy, my child. Sir, I don't understand. This gentleman who carries a gun, is he an officer of the law? Well, he's, uh, he's an officer of the law, all right. But uh, you must remember, Doctor, we're a young and rough country. Well, we have seen men like this who carry guns and abuse their power. It happens everywhere, even in my native Vienna. But, Father, we've got to get on that stage if we're going to make our connections. We'll see what can be done. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Alles wird in Ordnung sein. Stand away, mister. He doesn't need any help. On your feet, Walker. I said, get up. Once before, I've seen that kind of law, man. How do you mean that, Dan? That Dowd doesn't intend for Dave to get to Los Angeles alive. Look, Dan, isn't there someone you can send along to look out for the boy? I'd go myself, but we're two men short as it is. We couldn't spare anybody till the sheriff gets back from Pyramid Lake. Think I ought to go along, Pop? Adam, this isn't really our affair. Isn't it? Why'd you wire $1,000 to the lawyer in Los Angeles? To make sure the boy gets a fair trial. Well, maybe that's why I want to go along. See that he lasts long enough to get a fair trial. Paul, maybe you ought to send me along, too. Charlie, have you any empty seats? As far as I know, we're not carrying anything but the marshal and his prisoner. See, driver. Please take our luggage aboard. My daughter and I will travel with you. I told you at the hotel, there'll be no other passengers on this trip. Sir, you have no right to do this. This is a public vehicle. Tell your father to step out of the way, miss. I don't want to hurt him. But my father isn't well. And we must make that boat connection. I'm sorry, miss. But we haven't any weapons. Surely we can't endanger you and your prisoner. Marshal, are you commandeering this stage? I said there'd be no passengers on this trip. Well, you know you can't take over a public carrier, Marshal Dowd. It's for their own safety. I can't be responsible for what might happen on this trip. Well, you can just not bother yourself about that anymore, mister. Me and my brother here are gonna go along with you to make sure nothing peculiar does happen. That's right, Marshal. If you have any objections, you can telegraph your superiors for instructions. All right. Hand your guns to the driver. Hand up your guns, boys. You won't need them for what you have to do. Lock them up. Yours, too. I'll take the key. Marshal, you, uh, you just keep your seat. I just soon ride up there, Charlie, anyhow.
forgetting my manners, Miss Strasser. Now, you and your father met the gentleman with the shotgun, uh, United States Deputy Marshal Emmett Dowd. But as for the prisoner, well, I'm not certain whether or not the law permits us to recognize him. Uh, perhaps you could advise us, Marshal. We have a long journey, Mr. Cartwright. Let's not make it more difficult than is necessary. Well, looking at your prisoner, I would say you're making it a lot more difficult than is necessary. Since you're so well armed, Marshal, why is it necessary that your prisoner remain chained? Does it disturb you to see a murderer in chains? I don't go to see any man in chains. Particularly an innocent one. Walker's guilt will be established when we reach Los Angeles. Back, miss. Yeah, baby. Charlie, I sure am going to be happy to get my britches off of this, this torture rack. Well, we'll be stopping one of the horses another mile or so. if you don't mind the snakes. Well, sure, I'm glad you folks came by. What's wrong, mister? Oh, my horse lost a shoe ways back. Well, that's bad luck. Where are you headed? West? Which shoe is it? Oh, it's that left front foot. Yeah, it ain't no shoe, mister. You ain't going very far from that old pony. He, he's got a bad stone bruise. Well, maybe you got room for an extra passenger. I got the fare. Hold it. What's your name, mister? Cutler. Heard Cutler. Where are you from? Oh, up north. I asked you a question, mister. Answer it. Well, that's a good enough answer. Up north. Ranch near the Truckee River. I'm headed for Los Angeles. All the way across the desert with that one canteen? Well, I figured I'd get me another one at the next stage station. Marshal? Well, how about it, driver? You got room for me topside? Yeah, I guess so. We can't just leave him stranded out here. It's about in a week till another stage comes by. Didn't I see you in Virginia City? Oh, I don't reckon so, Marshal. <laughs> Nearest I ever got to a silver mine was Laredo. The land jobber sold me and my partner a salted claim. Did you get back at him? No. Nah, hanging party got to him first. Well, well how about it, Marshal? Uh, be grateful to you if... Uh, you let me ride to the next stage station. I can have my horse shot and be on my way. I'll let the driver keep your gun. Well, the uh, marshal's taking all our guns. He's uh, afraid one of us might lose his head. California? You ain't never 
been to California before? Yeah, I've been to California. I've been to San Francisco lots of times, Charlie, but it sure didn't look nothing like that. Well, this is Southern California. Stationed right beyond those hills there. Southern hey, California, huh? Yep. Well, I can tell you one thing, Charlie. It sure ain't gonna ever amount to much. <laughs> Trouble along the way? Nope, not on the way, Michael, you old high binder. I brung it with me. Just so you wouldn't be losing out on your share of the misery. <laughs> Only six for supper, Charlie? Only six and one in chains. But I don't reckon he'll be having much of an appetite. He's on his way to be hanged. Do tell. Bet you some gal's gonna be crying her eyes out. Maybe more than one gal, eh, Sonny? I'd like to think so, old timer. What are you gonna hang you for? Horse thieving or card sharpen? For twisting the arm off a nosy old desert rat. <laughs> oh, say, I like this boy, Marshal. <laughs> yes, sirree. <laughs> say, are you plumb set on hanging him? I suppose you're the station master. Yeah, me, that's me, Michael Bailey. Now, uh, the gents will bed down the dining room and uh, the ladies in the parlor. Don't you have any private accommodations? What's he talking about? Well, I, I reckon what he means, Mike, is that he wants a private room. Well, I'll tell you, mister, the only thing private out here is the hole that a man gets buried in. <laughs> and even that sly will be stolen out from under him by thieving Apaches. Breakfast at daybreak, supper at sundown. If you're late, you don't eat. Everybody hold it just a minute. Old man, do these doors lock? Yep. I'll give these back to you before we leave in the morning. Dr. Strasser, yeah. you and your daughter will occupy this room tonight. Thank you, Marshal. Hey, Bub, you just wait a minute. That's the station master's quarters. Quite right. You and your brother, Cutler, and the driver will occupy the parlor. My prisoner and I'll take the dining room. Well, ain't you forgetting about me? Sleep in the kitchen. He's being thoughtful again, as usual, Micah. Ain't you leaning kind of heavy on that tin star, Marshal? Now, you listen to me. I'm station master here. Me, Micah Bailey. I'll say who goes where. Mr. Bailey, it is a federal offense punishable by fine or imprisonment or both to interfere with the United States Marshal in the execution of his duties. It means he's taking charge, Micah, whether we like it or not. Oh, put that strong box uh, over by the stove. Mr. Bailey, how many firearms do you have at this station? Half a dozen rifles locked up in the liquor stores and this. Are the keys on here? Yeah. Well, until I leave, I will take charge of all firearms. Mister, this is Apache country. I wouldn't let loose of my shooting iron for any man. Especially a blowed up tin star. Bailey! That's an order, old man. Can he do this to me? Oh, dead gummit, Mike, I reckon he thinks he can. You better go ahead and do like he tells you. For the time being, anyhow. Well, that ought to, that ought to get you across the desert, Cutler, but I'd sure be careful that stone bruise finds you. Well, thanks a lot, Horace. You fellas want supper, you better rustle your shanks. I'm just dishing up beans and side meat. That sounds mighty laughing to me, Micah. 
Come on, Adam, let's go. Uh, what kind of beans? Wild beans. I picked them myself. Mesquite beans. Yeah, little Joe warned me if I went on a trip with you, I'd be eating cow fodder. You talk like I rode ahead and ordered them. Well, if you didn't, how come they're on the menu first night out? You don't come to think of it, it, it does sound a little strange, don't it? Oh, I don't think so. It's sort of like bees and honey. Uh, you and cow food just seem to go together. Yeah. Here's some more coffee, folks. Yeah. You haven't touched your food. First time I ever remember my appetite deserting me, miss. I can hardly blame you. I wouldn't feel much like eating either. Andrea, please. But you must eat. We still have a long journey, haven't we? Yes, miss. A very long and rough one. You must eat. It will give you strength. I'll get by, miss. When we get to Los Angeles, perhaps my father and I can notify your family. Well, that's thoughtful of you, miss, but there's no one to notify. My ma died when I was no bigger than a pollywog. Never knew my pa. Ma said he was a man with restless feet. I think she loved him more than he was worth. And you took after your father? No, miss. I always tried to stay put for as long as I was allowed. Looks now like I'll get my wish. I'll be settling someplace for good. Now look, Dave, you're not convicted yet. You're going to be back on the Ponderosa in no time, won't you worry? A lot can happen between now and the time I get tried. Wait, you'll forgive me. I think I'll finish my cigar in the other room. The rest of you are through with your meals. I'd be obliged if you'd all go to your rooms. Is that a request, Marshal? No, Miss Strasser, that is not a request. Good night. Andrea, please. Nothing to be gained by arguing with authority. But, Father... Come along, child. We have a long journey tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Dave. I'll be all right, Adam. Don't lose no sleep over me. Good night, Dave. Sneak out in this harness, Marshal. Or that one of them will jump you while you're asleep. Adam Cartwright, for instance, or the station master. How long has it been since you slept, Marshal? Almost a year. Has it really been that long? I can't imagine what keeps you going. I'm not much at carrying a tune, Marshal, but I can tell you what that song's about. It's about a girl named Corey and the way she died. You shut your filthy mouth, you hear me? You shut your filthy mouth. with you rolling and tossing. Well, Dad, burn it. I can't help it. This confounded couch is plumb alive. Every time I get in another position, it sprouts another hair. Look at that.
Butler's gone. I didn't hear him get up. Neither did I. Cutter, come on out. You murdered him. He tried to kill me. He was Walker's accomplice. We knew he was hiding out near Virginia City. Well, I wouldn't count on catching that boat, Dr. Strasser. Why? We lost the horses. Well, my brother and the others are trying to find him. How's he? His collarbone is shattered, several ribs broken, and he may have serious internal injuries. You just had to kill somebody, didn't you? He was trying to help Walker escape. I had my eye on him ever since I spotted him in Virginia City. I never knew suspicion could rot a man's mind. You really believe that, huh? All right, have it your way. I killed Cutler in cold blood. Are you satisfied? You want to kill yourself? Lay back. All we ever asked of you was to have a little compassion for the prisoner. Compassion? You mean feel sorry for him? Well, now, is there anything wrong with that? He's used this trick before, on Cora. Cora? My wife. I killed her with that shotgun. Well, now, what's that got to do with Walker? Because he worked his ways on her, too. Before I could get him back to Los Angeles for the murder of a paymaster, she tried to release him. And he deliberately pushed her in my line of fire to save his own rotten skin. Now we know the reason for the chains and the beatings. If you believe it, Doctor. It's not gonna work, Dad. You go from brutality to sentiment and I don't buy it. Cartwright! Take that. Well, what's that for? I'm deputizing you. You take Walker back to Los Angeles. You mean you want me to take your place? That's what I mean. You, you can't deputize somebody like this. Can I? The United States Marshal has the authority to deputize any citizen. And if I refuse? You can't refuse. It's your duty to take that badge. And you are bound by law to accept and carry out any reasonable commission. How's Mr. Dodd? I hear he almost got run over by some horses. He was trampled, almost killed. Oh, now ain't that too bad. And to such a nice fella, too. Dave, you have anything to do with it? You hear that, miss? Adam, you don't mean that, do you? Look, I'm asking if you had anything to do with the attempt to kill Dowd. 
Well, why, Adam? Why are you asking me that? Because he gave me this, his badge of office. We'll give it back to him. It's his, not yours. I can't do it. It's mine now. He deputized me to act in his place. He did what? Dave, I'm a deputy United States Marshal now. Sure, and I'm Billy the Kid or Jackass Sam. Look at him. I'm the same man I was an hour ago. I'm Dave Walker. I'm your friend. I know that, Dave. Well, for a minute there, you had me worried. You started to sound almost like the Marshal himself. This badge is mine. I can't give it back. That was pretty funny. Yeah, I guess it was. Well, now that's settled, Adam. Uh, well, what about these shackles? Well, what about them? Well, I want them off. Like you said, Adam, I'm not an animal. Why should I be chained like one? You did say that, didn't you, Adam? Yes, I said it. Well, then take them off. I don't like the idea any better than you do. I think the marshal would rather they stayed on. The marshal? Who cares about the marshal? You've seen for yourself what kind of man he is. the others. Which others are you talking about, horses or men? I mean Mike and Charlie. Hey, what's the matter with you in here? Nothing's the matter with me. Now, where's Mike and Charlie? Well, if I know Mike, he's probably falling in the chug hole someplace. Don't worry, Adam. I'll, I'll find him. <laughs> you heard him, miss? Yes, I heard him. I thought he was my friend. Oh, I think he is your friend. Oh. Then why doesn't he do something about these shackles? It's up to him now, nobody else. Perhaps he'll do it in the morning. Perhaps all he wants is wait until morning. Why? Why would he want to wait until morning? Oh, I don't know, David. I don't know. You know something? You called me David. Yes, I'm dreadfully sorry. I, I didn't mean to. Why not? It's my name, isn't it? Yes, it's your name. Sure it is. David. I like the way you say it. Say it again. What? My name. Go on, say it again. David? Yeah, David. Only you say it better. You say it better than I've ever heard it before in my life. You're not going any place. Sit down. That's better. Andrea. That's your name, isn't it? Yes. Andrea Strasser. It isn't true what the marshal said, is it? Of course not. You don't believe that, do you? No, I don't believe that. I'm innocent, Andrea. I swear I'm innocent. I know. I know that. Andrea? Yes, David? These chains. I can't stand to be in them any longer. I know, but you'll have to wait until morning. No. No, we don't have to wait until morning. What can we do? The marshal, he's got the keys. You can get them, and he won't be able to stop you. But what about Mr. Cartwright? Well, you heard him. He's pinned on that star. 
He's just like the marshal now. Oh, I don't believe that. All right, I should have known better. I guess a back fence stray like me doesn't have the right to ask people for help. I'll help you, David. I'll do anything you ask. You know, I was right. The way you say, David, I've never heard a sound as beautiful as that in all my life. Fortunately, I had some pills in my case. Poor man, he must be in terrible pain. Strange, isn't it, how one can feel sorry even for a man like him? We are in a strange land, my child. Yet it isn't so strange. A man is a man, and unfortunately, a doctor is also a doctor. And so he helps, whether he wants to or not. Yes, father, and so he helps. Let's go back to bed. How about the marshal? Him? He won't move an eyelid until morning. Then you go to bed, Father. How about you? I'm not very sleepy. I'll be in soon. Good night, my child. Good night, Father. Thank you enough. Oh, David, you're free. Yeah. Yeah, I'm free until the next time I run into Marshal Dowd. David, what are you going to do? I want to give the Marshal a taste of his own medicine. Oh, no, David. No, you mustn't. Mustn't I? I killed his wife, didn't I? You think you'll ever be able to forget that? No. Hold it right there, Dave. You shoot me, Cartwright, you'll have to kill her first. Is that the way it happened to the marshal's wife? No, I'm not going to shoot you, Dave. That's right, I forgot. The marshal put all the guns in the strong box. You don't have anything, Cartwright. You're wrong, Davy. You still don't have nothing. Out of the way, Cartwright! enough. Hit him once more and I'll kill you. What, you worried about him? Yeah. He's got a trial to go to. If we hadn't been along, you'd have killed him long before he ever got there. Maybe. For almost a year now, I've lived for nothing else. But you just made me realize what I was turning into. Get in. I reckon you're going to be mighty happy to get aboard that ship, aren't you, ma'am? I'm not certain I will, horse. After what you've been through? You Americans have a way of making things happen so quickly. In Europe, it sometimes takes a generation to put things right. Well, ma'am, I, I reckon you could sort of chalk it up to our weather. Weather? Yes, ma'am. You see, we got so dang much weather out here and so dad burned much land we got a whip that 
Well, we just ain't got time to be putting things straight for each other. You're a born philosopher, Hoss. Me? What's, what's she mean by that? She means that if you was any smarter, you'd still be the second dumbest man in creation. And you're looking at the first. It's a toss-up. Let's get going. Charlie, get him out of my station before anything else happens. Yeah! Get, get.